The movie is not about spies. <laughs> the movie is about betrayal, trust, loneliness, deception, and the tobacco-stained world of the 70s occupied by a group of people who live in a very shadowy world um, where they don't know who, who they can trust. And it deals with the Cold War and the peculiar paranoia of that period of time. Now your character, Jim Prudeau, basically almost, it's, it's, he goes through so much. Reading the book, um, you know, getting to the research on that, how did you take that from the book and then also Thomas's direction and mm. create, and I, I don't know, I guess recreate mm -hmm. this character in the movie? Having the novel there as the yeah. source material as well as the script meant that I could draw elements of Jim from both. But the truth is it was, um, it was tricky to, to refer back to the novel because really you have to deal with the thing that you're actually making and also trust Thomas to, to take your pieces of jigsaw that you offer him for him to make the whole picture. Mm -hmm. um, but Jim is a fascinating character because you get to see many facets of him unlike perhaps some of the others, you, you see him as a spy. I mean, he's sent abroad to go and bring back that general. So you see him operating. Uh, you see him uh, captured and in difficulties, and you see him in a more compassionate light when he's dealing with the little boy at the school when he's pensioned off to, to become a teacher. So um, I thought that the salient characteristics of that character, as, as described in the novel, are all present in the film. So I was lucky in that respect. Sure. Now, I guess one of the words that's been going around is how analog this movie is, yeah. or the time, you know, really? the time I've frame said that, that too, so, is everybody saying that? Yeah, I guess it's, it's kind of okay. going through. Right. Um, how do you bring the emotions to these characters through that type of, you know, the, first of all, the time frame of the Cold War, and how everything is, the technology is not there in regards to communication and everything, it's more of an old school form way. How does that emotion of the character break through all of that, and you portray that in the movie? Well, emotions are universal. I mean, betrayal is what it is, mm -hmm. uh, irrelevant of what arena it occurs in. So you're, 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 it's not a period thing, in a sense, playing those emotions. But um, that world and the world that Thomas has created in the film, which you know is obviously established in the book, is one of paranoia. Mm. Um, and that also is a universal feeling. But even today, I think we don't know what's going on. Julian Assange, I, I read uh, something recently with him um, in which he said, if you own a BlackBerry or an iPhone, at this moment, your whereabouts and your details are being sold to the highest bidder, right. to the security services who, who may want them. And that is a fact. You can find that online, that interview. Um, so we're living in a world where we're being observed. The amount of CCTV cameras that are around at the moment, you know, we're, we're going through it today. Observing it as a period piece means we feel comfortably separated from it. But the fact is, um, you know, the paranoia and confusion that was going on then was probably more difficult to deal with because you didn't have the technology to um, find out who was watching you when. Uh, so it was a different kind of spying. Sure. But, uh, it's still you know, happening today. It kind of goes into my next question too, is how, how are the themes of trust and betrayal relevant to today? I think you basically just summed that up. Well, well in the movie, yeah. how, how the, well, yeah. the themes of betrayal and trust are, are also universal. And um, seeing them at play in the movie uh, gives you a sense of what it must have been like during that time. But, you know, they're around today. Yeah. Two more questions, guys, real quick. Um, what's it like going on one-on-one -on -one with an actor like Gary Oldman? It's kind of why I do the job. <laughs> you want to be working with people at the top of their game, and Gary was always, uh, and is still, you know, a hero of mine. Um, John Hurt is a legend, and those were the two guys, actually, of all the cast who I'd never met before or never worked with. I knew everybody else, and it was great to catch up with all of them. But the scene with, with, uh, with John and the scene with, a um, couple of scenes with Gary, you know, that's as an actor, that's what you want to be doing. Yeah, can't get any better. Um, and now, kind of like the uh, wrap up silly questions. After diving into the spy world, did you find anything enticing about it? Could you be a spy yourself? And what would your name be? Uh, I, I, there's nothing enticing in that world, really. It's such a, certainly in the way that it's portrayed in the film. I think even the kind of, uh, you know, the, the, the fun of, of knowing that people around you don't know who you are 
and uh, having different identities must wear off extremely quickly, I would think, and you can't be honest and be yourself with anybody. Um, I think I'd be a terrible spy because I'm a terrible keeper of secrets. I'll blurt, don't, don't tell me anything, I'll blurt it out without, without uh, before I even know I've done it. Um, does that answer the question?